Hi everyone and welcome to my channel called Susanna Reacts where I learn all about India with your help and I share my European Slovak point of view. And today I've been uh, shared with a video about uh, Indian historian lashing at the West. I haven't watched this video so come and join me watching this with me and see what I have to say. When I listen to Boris Johnson, when I listen to people like Joe Biden, when I listen even more to Emmanuel Macron, all I can think of is how condescending you are. Glasgow was the UK's second most important city. Beautiful buildings, beautiful streets, a gorgeous city. When I see cities like this, I think also about the other side of it. You know, there's a phrase from Walter Benjamin, Every monument of civilization is also a monument of barbarism. I think of the famines in Bengal, the jute workers in Bengal sending jute to Dundee through the Glasgow port. I think of... No idea what he's referring to. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. Human beings from Africa enslaved and brought from Ghana to the New World and all those prophets getting sucked into cities like London and Glasgow He's speaking some truth here. You know, between 1765 and 1938, the British Isles stole 45 trillion dollars a pounds from India. 45 trillion sterling from India. I wonder what this is about. Do let me know. How could they steal that much money? Uh, what does he even mean? We never got paid for that. When the British... What is he talking about? Can you please let me know in the comments below? ...left India. When we threw the British out, our literacy... Do you feel like you threw the British out? Let me know. ...rate was 13%. So much for several hundred years of so-called civilization. Meanwhile, our landscapes were destroyed. You know, coal was foisted on India. You foisted coal on us. You were the... That's... He's he's having a proper go, isn't he? Ones that came and made us coal dependent. And then you left and now you dare to condescend to us. When I listen to Boris Johnson, when I listen to people like Joe Biden, when I listen even more to Emmanuel Macron, all I can think of is how condescending you are. You condescended to us 400 years ago. You condescended to us 300 years ago. You condescended to us 200 years ago. You condescended to us 100. Wow, he's really, really going for it, isn't he? 100 years ago, you're condescending to us today. You only know condescension because for you, colonialism isn't something that happened in the past and we defeated, we defeated you. It's not that. For you, colonialism is a permanent condition. And that permanent condition happens in two ways. There's the permanent condition of the colonial mentality. You want to lecture us. You want to tell us that we are responsible for all the problems because you'll never accept that you're the one principally to blame. You signed the Rio formula in 1992 on common and differentiated responsibilities. You like the common part. You like the common part. You like to say we're all in this together and so on. We're not in this together. Wow, he's just having a proper go, isn't he? I mean, look, obviously, I don't, I don't even know what is the, perhaps the best way of looking at this because obviously the countries like Western Europe, like the UK, like France or, you know, Italy or Spain, they had colonies, right? And that is a legit fact and that, that cannot be denied. Now, I feel like since then, obviously those countries have grown and perhaps the world has exploited the, the, uh, the, col the colonies to, to, to advance themselves now. Um, it, it happened, right? Now, I mean, the... Western countries are still, I guess, UK, France, doing okay. Spain and Italy, not so much. So I would imagine for an ordinary person, I I don't know. Obviously, I, I, I'm not any person inhabitant of those countries, but I feel like 
they might not associate like a common person may just not associate with this rhetoric i think where, where he's coming from i think where he's addressing is the politicians rather than common people because i don't think i would hope uh, that that the common person just like you and i is viewing it in that way let me know if you have different experiences just my two cents the United States, 4 or 5% of the world's population, still uses 25% of the world's resources. You outsource production to China, and then you say China is the carbon polluter. China. I love how he's calling out the hypocrisy. Yeah, and he's right. China's producing your buckets. China's producing your nuts and bolts. China's producing your phones. Try to produce it in your own countries and see your carbon emissions rise. You love lecturing us because you have a colonial mentality. I don't know if it is about colonial mentality, to be honest. I think maybe it's just, and this is just like my wild guess, uh, because those people haven't, well, we obviously, you and I, we don't know these people, right? And we don't know how they've been brought up, what has been instilled in them. But I would I would almost think that it's not a colonial mentality. I would almost feel like it might be just the arrogance or an ignorance of the West, if you like. Then there are colonial structures and institutions. You lend us money and every time you lend us money, which is our money, which is our money. Every time the International Monetary Fund comes to our societies and they tell us, here's the money we are giving you. We are giving you. No, it's our money. You give us our money back as debt and then you lecture us about how we should live. So this, this is the part I don't fully understand and I don't know what he means about giving us money. I think that the whole world works on, on, on the debt. You know, even my country, we every single country lives on including the US that he's like so against um, and it is from the central bank so I, I don't think it's coming directly for a particular country it's uh, I think there may be different entities to to call out if you like the climate justice movement is a movement that says we're worried about our future what future what future children in the African continent, in Asia, in Latin America, they don't have a future, they don't have a present. They're not worried about the future, they're worried about their present. Your slogan is, we're worried about the future. What future? Oh, it's, 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 it's a difficult topic because obviously I think he's speaking some truth there. Um, however, if, and I honestly don't even follow the environmental movement i i think we were going through like a polar shift where this whatever is happening was ought to happen so i'm not too sure where where i would stand on those issues but um uh but the thing is he's right like you know if you're in a survival mode you you live in the present however if it's kind of like when you run a company and then you, you know that you are doing something wrong and you know that for now it's sustainable up until the next point and then it will, you know, come hitting you back and you will perhaps not come out of it or come out of it with a really big damage. So if you knew right now what to do and how, what takes the steps to take, then you would be able to mitigate that and everything would be fine. I think... I would perhaps not agree with him on this one. Um, I think we do need to look into, and in general, like I, I think we should be, all of us, concerned about our environment, how we use our resources uh, to make it sustainable. Um, and it shouldn't be just like us, like it should come from a person's interest to, to like dispose the garbage correctly use only this much of electricity and maybe it's easier to send it down for me because i i live where i live uh however <laughs> i think ever since i was a little kid i i was always uh trying to be very careful about what i'm using i would i would, I would literally not throw anything away until it was like fully done or like if you know you go to school and you don't have all your papers written completely to the last <laughs> white blank space i would not throw it away so um, yeah, but I think we do need to look after our planet. It's it's kind of like where we're all in this together. Um, this is kind of perhaps where I not 
too much in alignment with him. That's a middle class bourgeois Western slogan. You got to be worried about now. 2.7 billion people can't eat now. And you're telling people reduce your consumption. How does this sound to a child who hasn't eaten in days? You got a clue into this, guys. You got a clue into this. Otherwise, this movement will have no legs in the third world. And and I think like I, I see where he's coming from and his stance because obviously, like if you're saying reduce consumption, well, he's clearly not talking about people in the UK, people in the States, you know, in France, etc. People that they you know have plenty, uh, but he's taking the stance of that world. But this is where. I believe that we should look at things from both sides, like both part of the coins and meet somewhere in the middle and evaluate, okay, so this is what's happening here. This is what's happening there. What do we need to, to do to, to bridge and find a common solution, right? So this is kind of where I would encourage us to, to, to look rather than being very, perhaps extreme on both ends of the spectrum. I think it's just, I don't believe we get anywhere with finger pointing and not collaborating, even though uh, certain things might be hard to hear for, for all of us. And uh, this is what I think. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you thought in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.